London, 1872. I have entered into the service of a new gentleman. It would seem he is a gambling man. All right, hello everyone. Welcome to a new Let's Play. Today we'll be playing, well starting, our first attempt at 80 days. I have played this a little bit just to see how it worked. And let me just tell you, it is very, very difficult. Things go wrong and not always as planned. This is, of course, based on the novel by Jules Verne, and it's a very heavy, like, text-based reading adventure where every decision that you make counts. You have limited funds and only a limited amount of time to make it around the world. So we really have to work hard to try and get to our destination. So let's go to London. Da -da -da. We're gonna hit begin. In just a moment, I wanna start my timer before I forget. Ready? Okay, let's begin. Da -da -da. All right, guys, so my master returned home from the reform club with a strange gleam in his eye. Passport. I don't know if that's how you say that. Passport, said he. We are going around the world. Pack my cloak and my evening jacket. There is not a moment to waste. You, Passport, now have funds. Nice. We have gained 4,000 pounds, and it is 7 p.m. on Tuesday of day one. New routes discovered. Where should we go? Um, let's pack. Okay, so train timetable. I don't know, this could be useful. Part of the Englishman's wardrobe. Part of the gentleman, part of the Englishman's wardrobe. Can I fit everything? We have the complete Englishman wardrobe. I don't know, I kind of want the traveling cloak, but the train timetable, but that's only for India. Let's leave it. Okay, let's depart. I think we'll go Cambridge. Let's embark. Open road. This looks bothersome. This journey, da 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 da. We have space for one suitcase. It's a good thing we got one suitcase. Da da. We hurried downstairs only to find a carriage was already waiting. I looked to Monsieur Fogg, or I asked no questions but bundled inside. I asked no questions but bundled inside, lashing the case to the carriage roof. To Charing Cross, my master shouted, but the cabbie leaned down and shook his head. Sorry, governor, he replied. I've been sent to pick you up and take you to Cambridge. But we are going around the world. Who sent you? We will not be shipped around like parcels. Who sent you? Let's do that one. I demanded. The fellows, the driver replied. The men whipped the horses, the magnetic tips of the lash connecting with the spark igniters on the machine flanks, and then we were off, rattling along the cobbles heading north. I forgot to tell you, this has a bit of like a steampunk kind of vibe. Anyway, this is a calamity. We must sabotage this carriage. This is a calamity, I declared, but Monsieur Fogg gestured me to silence. It is no doubt my old colleague wishing to encourage me to make a do donation, he replied sagely. Well, perhaps they will have something to offer our cause as well. How could he be so calm when all hung in the balance? Such, of course, was his way. We flew up the Great North Road, the carriage showing an amazing turn of speed that pleased my master greatly. This is no normal phaeton. We are being kidnapped most successfully. Let's go this way. This is no normal phaeton, I remarked. Indeed not, he replied. It seems our learned friends have been busy. I have great hopes for this little diversion, passport. And with that, we fell into silence until we arrived a few short hours later. Cambridge! We'll have to sleep here and explore in the morning. It's unfortunate, but we'll do it. Okay, sleeping through the night, we had to spend ten pounds. The carriage set us down outside the gates to Trinity College. The cabbie tipped his hat, and I dismissed him. But I was already off into the college where my master was greeted by a figure in a long black robe. I waited for an introduction to be made. Let's go, an assassin? An assassin, but no, the figure stood back and introduced himself as Professor Infray, head of thaumatology, is that even a word, at the college. You must be passport, he declared, rounding on me cheerfully. 
Tell me, do you prefer coffee or Madeira? I prefer cognac. <laughs> the professor peered a moment longer, then straightened up and laughed. Well done, Phileas. You have chosen an excellent man here. I'm sure the two of you will go far. His eyes twinkled very far indeed. Come with me. As we followed the strange, loping academic, I glanced his this way and that, down the resounding stone corridors and up curling wooden staircases. The place was quiet, except for the occasional hurrying youth, all of whom bowed their heads to the faster as we passed, and shot us looks, clearly in some awe of some feature of this curious bird. We arrived eventually at his study, an island of desks surrounded by a small library that had carelessly tumbled out of its shelves. I hear you are going around the world, Phileas, the professor remarked, and we would like to offer you some assistance. That is most generous, Monsieur Fogg remarked. Not really, the professor replied. You are a Trinity man. Your expedition will be for the glory of Trinity College. We'll put it in our periodical. You see, it will annoy Oxford terribly. Ah, there is always an angle. Still, the idea that this strange old gentleman could help our cause was intriguing, and I leaned in to hear what was an offer. But, declared the professor, enough business. First, you will dine with us in hall. I have gowns ready for you, and young man, he turned to me, we will be able to muster a fine cognac, I should think. And so, for the first night of our great journey, we dined with silverware and candlelight. Du, 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 du. Oh, wait. Uh, so we're in candlelight under the beady eyes of somber portraits and in conversation with a flock of erratically minded men and women whose discussions turned on a sixpence from Irish passage tomes to aeronautical wingtip design. I thoroughly became, I became somewhat sozzled. I think that's probably like a term for drunk. So let's go thoroughly overexcited, and when we retired to bed, it was a smile on my lips and a cry of, What a marvelous adventure on my tongue. Okay, we have to explore. Do, 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 do. We roused breakfast in the hall more soberly and met the professor on the roof. This is what we've been working on, he declared, waving to a folded contraption in front of us. It resembled a pile of mangled coat hangers. Oh, let's go with a sleeping bird. It's more poetic. It resembled a sleeping bird. Oh my gosh, I can't even say this word. A gryodyne, the professor continued, powered by the rise of evaporating water through micropores. Most interesting. We were thinking of testing her across the North Sea. We thought you might pilot her. Whatever that word is, I declared, is she fast? Oh, extremely. We can have you in Christiania within six hours, so long as she doesn't crash, the man beamed. So, are we agreed you will take her? Uh, sure. I think that's a good way to go. Okay, let's see what we can find. Um, we're this much in Munich, but we're not really going to Munich. Part of left of the law. Let's leave it and let's depart. Let's go. Rough skies and cold weather. This looks worrisome, but the traveling cloak from our gentleman traveler set should set us to rights. So we didn't bring it. It's okay, we can take care of his needs as we go. On our way in this crazy thing. Experimental gyrocopter. The pilot touched the control and the gyrodyne began to smoke and hiss. It is safe. We clambered aboard, quickly aboard. No questions. Next up, Europe, the pilot declared. The great craft unfolded its wings, seemed to pause a moment as it waited for a gust of something, and then we were up, up, and away into the air. Off we go, guys. Um, let's converse. Begin conversation. Greetings, Monsieur Henry. Quite a view from up here, isn't it? Christiania. That seems terribly unlikely. Um, Christiania. What do you think? Stockholm? Here's something I do know. Stockholm seems to be weathering the changing world economy. Now tell me. So I'm guessing you didn't go to Cambridge then. No. Me? Of course not. Frenchman, of course. And not too educated besides. Christiania to uh, Canton. Through Baku. Christiania to Warsaw. 
via Stockholm. We didn't really get any new routes. That's unfortunate. But if we can get from here to Stockholm and maybe Helsinki, that could be good. Their journey across the North Sea was surprisingly brief. The little bird craft bouncing up and down in the air, it seemed to collect water vapor, rise, dry out, and then fall, and then repeat the process. The pilot seemed untroubled by this motion, so I took it to be normal and sat back, enjoying the ride as best as my poor joggled cranium would, would allow. Finally, we settled down on the shores of Norway. A successful test? I asked. Oh, we knew it worked, the pilot said, but the professor wants to say you started your journey with one of ours. Good for the copy. Of course. Anything going to pop up before we reach it? No? So we will have to explore in the morning, pass the night here. Shoot, guys, already day three, not doing good. Oh my gosh, he just dropped like half his health. The streets of Kishan were completely deserted. We did not see anyone anywhere. We found a hotel in the end, but it was deserted and cold, and there was no dining to be had. Monsieur Fogg seemed quite unruffled. We will leave money on the counter, he declared, and perhaps a note that their service could be improved. Luckily, we had brought a warm layer with us. Yes, it went back up a little bit. We had brought a warm layer with us. The woolen cloak blunted the edge of the chill. Okay, we have to explore. It doesn't seem like there's anything in here, guys. Right, so we can go up. The city was still empty. I was convinced we had arrived during a festival. Quick puzzle. Put me in mind of what had happened to Belgrade. The city was still da da da. Surely the Austro Hungarian Empire was not also moving north. Who would be mad enough to engage a war in two directions at once? Oh well, except for Napoleon. Yeah, he's a Frenchie. Of course, but then look how the, that fiasco turned out. This is an eerie place, Monsieur Fogg remarked in an uncharacteristic display of emotion. Certainly the silent streets had a certain menace to them. Perhaps we should be moving on. Perhaps so, he agreed. Let us hope we can find someone to take us on to the next destination, however. Let's depart. Let's go to Stockholm, because it's, like, ready. Let's go. Departing in 14 minutes. Not a moment too soon, guys. All right, we're going to Stockholm, Sweden. Via a durable. Durable. The Louise of Sweden was a beautifully presented airship, and she flew like a dream. Let's, uh, converse. Greetings, Madame Berg. Ah, good day, young man. Stockholm. My uncle's always wanted to travel abroad aboard the Baltic ferry from Stockholm to Helsinki. Oh, there's a, s a ferry. Wait, we're going to Stockholm. Stockholm to Copenhagen? That seems quite impossible to me. Let's go Warsaw. I believe so. My always, uncle always wanted to travel aboard the Baltic ferry from Stockholm to Warsaw. Bye. Okay, so we found new routes. In the middle of a riot? Ooh, we might not want to do that. The route was uneventful, and there was little to mark the day. I spent my time... Uh, attending my master's state and keeping him comfortable. I wonder, passport, he murmured thoughtfully. Do you suppose we will win this bet of ours? This was sure, sure indicator of weakness. I redoubled my efforts. And soon I watched the vigor return to his cheeks under my care. We arrived in Stockholm before dark. Good gracious, this is rather more exhausting than I had anticipated. What did you expect? Let's explore. I should have gone to the market. We're going to have to spend the night. We met a middle-aged Swede by the name of Sven who offered to show us around during the day. The city was undergoing vast development everywhere we looked. New land was being dredged from the water. Great monstrous machines. Let's go this. New land was being dredged from the water and buildings made of granite slabs rose like Egyptian temples block by block, almost as we watched. We are building the future here in Sweden. We are very advanced, Sven told me. Do you have good transportation? I asked on behalf of my master, who would never, of course, lower himself to ask the question directly. The best, he replied, but specifics were somewhat harder to come by. I asked about the Duchy of Finland. I asked about Russia. Our northerly route was destined to cross the Tsar's borders soon. Sven looked thoughtful. Russia is not a very happy place, he remarked, though getting him to say more than that was impossible. We took our leave of him, and he seemed almost sorry to see us go. 
I suspect he was a lonely soul. Aww. Okay, so we can plan. So our routes seem to be to head on to St. Petersburg. Or we can try and get down to Warsaw. I think Warsaw may be better, but it doesn't depart for three days. Whereas this one departs in three days. Departs in three days. Oh my goodness, guys. I think we should wait. Okay, let's go back here. Let's get a hotel. We'll pass the night here. We found our hotel to be very well appointed and we're glad of it because the streets outside became fearfully cold at night as night fell. It is a wonder people can live in such a chilly place. There is something beautiful to this bleak city. From the way he turned his head, it was clear that Monsieur Fogg found my remark distasteful, but he didn't, but he made no particular rejoinder. Whoopsie! So the market opens at 7 a.m. So let's go to the market. A set of dominoes. A pair of galoshes, seafarer set. I feel like we're going in the cold climate, so let's get rid of the evening jacket and we'll get these knitted gloves and why not the dominoes? We can go to the bank. We have to wait a couple more days. Monsieur Fogg looked up from his ledger. We are due to visit the bank, I think, passport. I regarded I regarded the manager of the bank as we entered, a well-dressed, calm gentleman who greeted us with cool professionalism. You wish, to, you wish to withdraw funds, we were told. I warn you, it may take some time. We cannot afford even a single day, I cleared, and we swept out. Thankfully, our situation is not that dire. Right. So we need to check. Let me just check. I really kind of want to go down to Warsaw. You can even go up here. The North Pole. Interesting. Okay, so... Um... Thoroughly ungentlemanly behavior. I really don't want to negotiate, guys. Derp. Let's go hotel again. We'll pass the night here. With that remainder of the day, I reported my master every service. I went out to explore a little. And found nothing of any great interest. Plan. I think this could be altered to leave at 9 a.m. It didn't get any cheaper. We're wasting all of our time here. Uh, okay, we're just going to go to the hotel again. As night fell, I attended to Monsieur Fogg. We want to keep him up in good health, guys. All right, let's depart. I think I want to go down to Warsaw. Wait, what does it say? 140. This one's cheaper. Let's embark. Da -da 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 -da. We left Stockholm promptly and without fuss. Good to know. Let's converse. Maybe we can find something. Greetings, madame. Begin conversation. Now what do you know about St. Petersburg? I have nothing to say. St. Petersburg to Moscow? I believe so. Moscow can be reached from St. Petersburg by train, but the journey is a tiring one. Um, Moscow to Sarsitsyan? Absolutely, my brother. Visit Moscow long before the night train was hijacked. Goodbye. So we can go from St. Petersburg to Moscow to... Ooh, we can all go all the way over here. That's kind of useful. Okay, the ferry left Stockholm terminal and cut out into the Baltic Sea for the short crossing to Helsinki. I feasted on herring and small battered fish and leaned over out over the rail with a few other passengers, one of whom, a young Finnish girl, 
passed the time trying to teach me a little of the language. The grammar appeared terribly complex, but perfectly designed for describing quickly and accurately the positioning of objects relative to other objects. We Finns make excellent clockwork, the girl remarked. We are also very tidy. I asked my new friend how we should proceed from Helsinki. And she shrugged, the only way onwards is to St. Petersburg's, or to turn back. If it was me, I would turn back. I did not, I do not think my master would like that. The girl laughed, then perhaps head south. I think there's a road from Minsk to the edge of the Black Sea, but why didn't you plan your trip before taking it? We docked at Helsinki in the early evening. Um, and I waved at my friends as she disembarked. Your relationship with Fog has deteriorated slightly. Well, we should have maybe gone to Minsk. Well, it's okay. We'll go from St. Petersburg. Don't panic. Okay, let's check this market. Ooh. Valuable in Eurysist, Astrectrum, and Odessa. Worth 4,000 in Merv. Let's get rid of that. Look at this. Eventually you can get like another suitcase. Departs in two days. Can I not go all the way? Try that again. Let's get them to depart tomorrow at 1 p.m. Okay. So we should find a hotel. We'll pass the night here. So he should get some health back just from being at the hotel. Um. Nevsky Prospect, immortalized by Dostoevsky and Google, sorry guys, I'm not really good at Russian names, would have been unrecognizable to those vulnerable, venerable writers. Imperial soldiers filled the streets in Galitzin Kodunki, <laughs> oh gosh, I'm butchering this, enormous black iron hydraulic walkers. We stayed boldly and decisively away and saw little more than the occasional flying fragment of stone bashed out of some wall somewhere. It departs at what time? One, we don't have time to explore. Let's go. Going to Moscow. The line from St. Petersburg to Moscow was affectionately known as the Tsar's Finger and ran perfectly straight apart from a bend near the city of Novgorod. The story went that the route was drawn by the Tsar with a ruler except where he drew around his own fingertip. This was typical of the popular image of interfering Russian Tsars and the story we found to be widely believed. Okay, so we should converse so we're going to Moscow. So let's ask about... You mentioned trains. I've been told Tehran is linked to Kabul aboard the Kamerjur. Let's ask about Kabul. Hear this, you can buy magnifying glasses in Kabul. You can sell for profit in Benrez. Dominoes. You play dominoes. Most generous. So sits in. Oh, we can get rose candles. So return to Mount Elbrus. Talk a lot, don't you? Oh, he doesn't like us. Okay, there's a train from Istanbul going. Ooh. Okay, well, for now we have to continue on this direction. The train was comfortable enough. I spent my first day aboard. Eavesdropping? Playing dominoes? 
with a charming Afghan master who proved to be fierce and mimic of voices. I broke even. <laughs> After a pleasant enough back and forth of play, during which I learned that the Karmeshka hosts an outpost of Artificers Guilds, we settled down for the night. Oh no, fog! No, 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 converse. We don't have a choice. Greetings, Madame Min Minin. May I see your ticket? Let's ask about Moscow. Moscow to something? You mentioned trains. I've been told Urga is connected to Hong Kong by rail. Speaking of trains, I understand you can get to Salt Lake City from San Francisco aboard the Transcontinental Express. No idea, but now Vladivostok is the home of the Russian Pacific fleet. I believe so. Vladivostok is Lake Yohama by Korean trader, but the fare is well beyond most travelers. Um, Yokohama to Honolulu. Do you know buyers in Acapulco will play a huge amount for harmonicas from Honolulu? Use the dominoes? Why, yes. Um, I'm going to finish this little leg of our journey, and then I'll end this part, guys. Let's ask about... Where was it? We're going, we're going, I think, here. Karmitskaya? So the fastest way commerce carries here is via Omask. Omask. Right, the governor of Omask is a very important man. To Kabul? I believe so. My father lived in Omask when the mail airship... Yay, the mail airship! Oh, nice. Was this going to the same place that that other one was? We found a really good route, guys. Oh, that one goes really far south. San Francisco. To Salt Lake. To Cheyenne. To Omaha. To Burlington. Chicago. Wow, we found a way across America. Right, so I think the best option for Moscow is to head out this way. The train was stopped twice before reaching Moscow. The first time it was searched for artificers' equipment, and the second time they searched for weaponry. Indeed, they found my hammer and confiscated it. It seems the Russians do not take risks, or else they simply like to keep their people under their thumb. Unfortunately, one of the other passengers decided to put up a fight, insisting they would not open their suitcase. A standoff commenced. I avoided Monster Fogg's eye, knowing that he would only ask me to resolve the situation. Oops, we should have done something. The soldiers eventually hauled the man off the train, shouting complaints and curses. The train started moving once more, but we were somewhat delayed. I should have dealt with it. Shoot! All right. It seems we can complete our English wardrobe here for protection against uncomfortable conditions. Let's plan. Oh, look at this. We can go all the way here, but look at that fare. Oh my goodness. How much is it to here? 920? 140. This would be better. It's cheaper. Departs tomorrow at 8 a.m. Let's do that because it's more affordable. Okay, so let's go back to Moscow and we're going to get a hotel. Yes, Moscow is not a comfortable city. It was not a comfortable city for a Frenchman. A local composer had just written a piece people were calling the 1812 Overture, commemorating the Russian victory over Napoleon's invading Grande Armée in the fateful year. Patriotic passions were out of fervor. But I did not, so I stayed very sensibly indoors. Alas, my friends, my solitude was quickly interrupted by an officious rap on the door. Two men in clothes, so plain that they were most certainly police officers, invited themselves in. The new czar was a paranoid sort, so it was said, but who could blame him? Him having personally witnessed his father's assassination as a young man, my luck, it seemed, had deserted me. So I resolved to make my own. They asked me my name and purpose. I answered defiantly, keeping to the truth and not raising my eyes from the floor. They seemed skeptical about our journey, and I could not blame them. Anyone with half a brain in his head would wonder at our breakneck journey around the world. At length, they nodded. One removed a curious monocle and placed it into his pocket. It seems you are truthful. Crazy, but truthful. Why you travel through Russia, we do not understand. Perhaps you are heading to Vladivostok. 
Perhaps you have some advice for us. Perhaps we do, the policeman agreed. Vladivostok is closed to all but military personnel. If you were thinking of going that way, choose again. They proceeded to rummage through our case, tossing our possessions in all directions, but finding nothing of interest. Do not stay in Moscow too long. Russian air does not suit Frenchmen. I took the warning to heart. We're now shabby, guys. All right, so I'm just going to click this. All right, guys, so that is the first part of our first attempt at 80 days around the world. Uh, we made it kind of far. Like, we're in Moscow. I think that's pretty good from London to Moscow. You know, we're doing not bad. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you like this part, please give it a great big thumbs up. Any questions or comments, leave them down below or give me a shout out on, t on Twitter at DaydreamerSues. And if you want to be notified when I make new content, please hit subscribe. I love you guys, and I look forward to seeing you all in the next part. Take care. Bye-bye.